An outpouring of tributes continue to come in for the late cultural activist and pioneer Joyce Ogeest. The trailblazer who helped take the island's folk music genre mainstream died at the age of 76 this week. She was found unresponsive by friends, loved ones and first responders on Thursday, May 21st, 2020 at her Arendelle Hill home in Castries. Former True Tones band frontman and legendary St. Lucia musician and recording artiste Ronald Boo Hinkson was a contemporary of the late founder of the Huronora Voices. It's a, that's a very sad one, for the, not just for me, but for the country, because George's contribution to the preservation of our, our indigenous folk music has been immeasurable. You know? And um, she made it a lifelong ambition to see to it that our folk music is given the prevalent that it needs to be given. Joyce is not somebody who believes that we should never disconnect from what is indigenous to us. And um, she made every effort to to preserve our music. Joyce is one of the people who started to record very early and, and recorded our folk music. I, I record when the Bobby and with the hearing our voices. First to record an entire album of Jason folk music, you know. And so for that, she must really be commended. She's, she's a huge loss to the musical landscape of the country. Apart from an illustrious career in music and arts, Miss O'Geese was also an accomplished athlete, especially in the sporting discipline of netball, and represented St. Lucia regionally and internationally. She was the Sportswoman of the Year in 1969. Notwithstanding her many accolades and accomplishments for the revered artiste, she was more importantly a friend. Sometimes she'll be mad at me for all kinds of things. So. <laughs> Joyce, Joyce has a, uh, somebody you, 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 you need to know how to deal with, you know. Take some things with a grain of salt kind of thing, you know. Um, because she, she does have a tendency to bring up the same thing all the time, you know. Of course, about the same thing all the time. And, and she's accepted that. That's how she does, you know. But she was a great person, you know. And, but they had a great musical relationship. And Joyce really... Um, she really did influence my love for Central folk music, you know. And she's the one who who nurtured people like Elra Ume. Elra early days of her music um, emanated from, from her association with Joyce Ogis. And then Joyce also did a, uh, an education music program for the schools. Auguste was also a broadcaster who used the medium to teach music. And then Joyce also did a, uh, an education music program for the schools, you know, and that impacted the, the young people in the schools in a very profound way. She taught them rhythms, how to break up notes and so on, on a radio program. And since that program stopped, nobody ever did that again, you know. So her contribution to the development of music in the country and to the preservation of our indigenous music was very profound. In April of 2000, Ogis was named in an OAS list of outstanding women of the 20th century and was inducted into the Hall of Fame for both sports and music. She also served as a Justice of the Peace and coordinator of various national activities, including the school rally for the historic visit of South African President Nelson Mandela and the cultural program during the papal visit to St. Lucia in 1986. In 1978, her likeness was featured on the 10-cent stamp of St. Lucia. Ogis pioneered the Festival of Carols and was awarded the member of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire in 1988. In 2017, she was awarded the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. Corby DeVoe, HTS News Force.